All right. So what we're going to do here is we are comparing the two statements from Franz K. Security Guard. On the left, you have report number 30, which was done first. And then on the right, you have report number 68. Now, on number 30 over here, this was done at 2.30 in the morning on the 10th. It wasn't put into the computer until the 16th. And it was done by Detective Rufuschenker, or however how you pronounce that name. All right, and then on this one, it was done on the 18th, so eight days later. Detective Donald Colotus did this at 246 and put it in the computer that same evening. Now, this Detective Colotus is one that has since gotten a promotion. He's now Sergeant of Internal Affairs. The ones that are in yellow squares here are ones that worked on the Kanika case that have been promoted. I don't know when these promotions took place, but this is as of this year right now. This one was a lieutenant. Now he's Chief of the Fire Service Division. And this one was a lieutenant or a detective. I don't really remember. I have to look him back up. But now he's captain of the Bureau of Investigation within Rosemont. All right. Now, on this one, this first one, it says that they interviewed him. He said that Brian started his shift Friday, working 11 to 7. Okay, I'm just going to be bouncing back and forth between the two to compare things. Brian stated that during the evening between the hours of 1 and 2, he was not sure exactly what time it was, but stated they received a noise complaint coming from room 926. Now over here, it says that the detective asked him how long he'd worked for CSI, Capital Security and Investigations. He stated that he had worked for the company for approximately six months as a floating employee between Crown Plaza hotels. I asked him if he completed incident reports as part of his regular duties. Because if you remember, if you watched the video that I did on CSI, they state that that is part of their regular duties in case they need uh, documentation for any court hearings, if anything were to arise. And his reply was, he stated that he only completes reports when the issue is a big deal. I asked him what a big deal would be. He was unable to provide me with an example. He said, I then asked if he had received any calls for noise complaints. He stated that between 2 and 2.30, he received a noise complaint via the radio from the front desk. Okay. I asked him if anyone went with him. He stated that he responded to the room 926 alone. Okay, now let's go back over here. Let me see. He stated that when he got off the elevator while he was approaching the room, he was asked by two males approximately 22 to 24 years old um, that were standing outside the room and they asked him if something was wrong. He stated that they received a noise complaint from the room and needed to talk to the people in the room. 
Okay, go back over here. He continue, continued that when he exited the elevator, there were two black male subjects in their mid-twenties on their cell phones. He told them that the front desk received complaints that they were being too loud. One of the males stated that he was responsible for the room. He was the host. He recalled that one of the men text someone in the room to open the door. Let's go back over here. Over here, he says they received a noise complaint from the room and he needed to talk to the people in the room. Fran stated that he asked who the room was registered to and the one black male stated that it was him. Blank stated that he knocked on the door and a girl opened the door and he told them that they had to quiet down a little due to the noise complaint. Now here he's stating that he went and knocked on the door for them to open it but over here he says he recalls that one of the men text somebody to open the door. Then he states when the door to room 926 opened, a black female subject wearing big glasses opened the door. He continued that there was another black male in his early 20s that was standing behind her. He stated that he did not enter the room. Okay. He doesn't mention the black male inside the room here. And like I said, he says he knocked on the door. So how could you forget if they text or if you knocked on the door? Then he states that he could smell alcohol in the room and he thinks that there was 10 to 15 people in the room at the time. Then he stated that the girls told them to tell the people inside the room to quiet down and they will turn the music down. Over here he stated that at the door he could smell marijuana and alcohol. The police officer asked him if he asked the group to refrain from smoking. He stated that he did not. One of the male subjects stated to him that old people call the police. He told Blank that he was young and asked him to take down his number, phone number to call if there were any more noise complaints. Blank stated that he did not write down the subject's number. He stated that the two guys in the hallway went back into the room and closed the door. I asked Franz when they normally call the police for noise complaints. He stated that the hotel will call after at least three warnings. I asked him if the hotel usually does an incident report for noise complaints. He stated they didn't unless someone gets kicked out. Back over here to the left. Franz stated that two hours later he went to check on the ninth floor and when he got off the elevators he saw three girls walking in the hallway and knocking on doors. He asked them what they were doing and they told him that they were looking for their friend. He stated that they would he stated that they went back into the room. The next time he saw the, those girls was approximately 5 a.m. They were asking him where and how they could get back to the parking lot and he was in the main lobby when they approached him. Now over here France continued that after 3 o'clock a.m. he dispersed the folios to various rooms. The front desk blank called over the radio that three girls were walking on the ninth floor when he made contact with them. One of the females stated that she was looking for her sister. He was told to tell the group that they either needed to return to their room or go to the lobby and wait there.
Blank stated that he told the group that they would have to speak to the front desk about reviewing cameras. The group then returned to their room. France was asked if he had any conversations with any of the subjects in room 926 about taking smoke detectors off the ball or covering the smoke detectors with towels. Frank, France, Francis denied this. I asked him to estimate the amount, the number of individuals in the room. He stated there was at least 10 people in the room. Over here, he said 10 to 15 because they were rapping to a song. Now, I don't know what rapping has to do with how many people, but okay. Then he asked him if he was at the front desk when the family was making threats towards employees. He said he was not, but he had heard about it. And then that's when he said that he was going to be out of the country, and they finished the interview. Now, here's my biggest problem besides the little indiscretions. My biggest problem... right here and he says that after three o'clock he distributed the folios and that's when he's was called about the three girls and he talked to the girls now over here he just states that it was two hours later when he went to go check on the ninth floor again and he saw them my issue is to see three girls it would have had to been after 3 30 Because Bri, Bri was not back until then. So, what we must do is go to the footage and see when do we see him going towards the elevators carrying the clipboard of folios. Because all in all, no matter what time it was, this man has a serious issue with telling time. Especially that he knew that there was an incident, you would think that if nothing else, he would have at least taken notes. Whether it be for his own purpose or whatever. But let's pull up the footage and let's see. Alright. It is 329.40 and we have him coming out with his clipboard of the folios and he's going towards the elevators. Speed this up here. It's three thirty one twenty seven. So it would have to be. I would say at least 335, 340 when he saw them. Because we got to give Bri, Bri time to get up to the room and then tell her about Kanika missing. And then they start going to go look for her again. And that's doing it very quickly. So again, he doesn't keep track of time well at all. But at 3.52, we do see everybody come back down. The security, the girls, and everybody. So it happened before 3.52. I can say that much. 